oatmeal. Rolling and I am awake. <laughs> Had a double matcha, iced matcha, and then wow. now I have a large coffee just straight up. I had a little coffee. I took a sip and like I only drink coffee not for energy, but like to go make me go poo poo. Oh yeah. And one sip, I was ready. I do decaf though. Decaf to make you go poo poo? It but the coffee <laughs> is coffee whether it's caffeine or not. A lot of people don't know that. Wait, explain. So co- decaf is gonna give you the same what what benefits coffee does right. have. You're gonna get from or like the natural laxative and all that. All that, even with the decaf. I didn't decaf. know that. Yeah, yeah. But I caffe- should know this. But is it gonna wake is you not up? Part of the laxative? No, because okay, no it caffeine. won't wake you up. But it will make you poo poos. Yes. Okay. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. The more you know, it's yeah, like it's CBD know. doesn't give you the head high. Right, coffee right. doesn't give you the, mm. the caffeine. Ah, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, what a way to start the podcast with some knowledge right there. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to Fourth Meal. Welcome Eric back, Lodz, DJ Five, special guest. I've known this guy for twenty years. I feel like I've seen you more this year than I have since like, <laughs> I, I know. left radio. We've been we've the past been, couple years, yeah. We, you know, I've been we lucky went a enough to years cross your like, path. Yeah, we we went a, a few years without yeah. like seeing each other, just because yeah. life happens. Yep. And uh, my wow, Felly fell. I'm Welcome. here. Thank you guys for having me. Welcome, Can't believe man. this is your first time on the podcast, man. What the fuck? I know. I it's, felt it's like way overdue. Yeah. How are you feeling? How was your How was your weekend? It was good. I did. Uh, you know what? I was I was supposed to do the Michelada Rumble to hang out and take my my Lolo. Uh huh. And it was one of those cloudy days. And I don't know what it is, man. I can't do clouds. It oh, makes me want to stay home. Really? Yeah. Like the gloomy days. Yes. I love really? that shit. I, I, I love can't, gloomy days. I can't do it. I really? know you do. I, we've <laughs> talked about that. Yeah, I, I want to drive in the rain. Like if it starts raining, I want to go out for a spin. Like yeah. Go shopping. Rain is different. Yeah. Like I like, I, I would, yeah, take a little walk in the rain. Yeah, but yeah. It was just cloudy and I'm like, oh, I don't really want to go to Santa Anita racetrack and the, you Drink know. micheladas? And then I was supposed to do a. We did it. We were my car club. We were supposed to do a cruise. Well, well, we did a cruise in Pomona, minus myself. Mm. So I What's the up, car club called? Elite Car Club. Elite, nice. nice. I was in Feldy's Lowrider the Sounds other day. Sounds very OG. At, at Vic One's crib. Nice. It's hot. I saw that video. You guys so lit. House. In the garage. And at your house. Was like lit. three in the morning. <laughs> that was a class. Don't cloud recall night. being at his house, but uh, yeah, we were at his yeah. house. Izzo and I. <laughs> I <laughs> promise you were there. That was right after the Power Tools uh, 30 year oh, yeah, party yeah. in downtown. We ended up at Philly's. Oh, like, yeah. oh man, what a disaster! Shout out to that the video in chat. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, life life is good. Life's good, and I, I was gonna say I've been in that car club. Man, I met my boy Albert, the president of Elite, when I was in high school in Pomona, back in the late 80s. I'm dating myself. We met in science class. Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. And then I, you know, of course, left L.A. and ended up back in L.A. Full circle. Because of power. And still in the same, still with my boy in the same club. It's, it's, it's been dope. the same name since back in the days. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, well, wow. he had it? No, he didn't. Obviously, he well, didn't have no. it in high school. No, no, no. The so, well, club. Elite technically has been around since 1977. Oh, oh got shit. it. And, um, and there's just different chapters. That's how kind of No, so this, we're, we're a small This is just one chapter. Small club. Ah, got but it. But we're, no pun intended, a very elite, uh, you know, our club is very, uh, shout to the homies, real picky. It's like oh, the yeah. Soho house of car clubs. I mean, if you want to <laughs> say that. Like we, you know how some... And this isn't a slight to any car clubs, but some people, you know, they throw up a little bit of paint and some rims, and they're like, oh, you know, I got a custom car. And you just want to be deep, like the more the merrier for yeah, some yeah. Like, some car clubs. We're, we, I, I guess the way to explain it is we, have, we take a lot of pride, um, and, um, you know, we, we have high standards right, right. with the cars. So, What's some of the, like, requirements? I mean, like... You know, scratches on the paint, like you got to get that. Oh, fixed. I got it. Okay. Like you can't let that go. Um, and, you know, just keeping your car, you know, the basic stuff, keeping it clean, you know, um, just and just overall, you know, standard with the you know, like good chrome. There can't be because there's bad chrome jobs. Right. Like yeah, somebody yeah. gets their bumper chromed and it and it's it's got splotches and bubbles and whatnot or or or, or divots. Right. Yeah, and no. just a bad. So just you know, okay, doing it right, you know, 
I used uh, to, I was growing up, I, I, I used to build the model cars and like. I remember you telling me I that. I had a little car club called True Image. <laughs> True Image Car Club. And we're in a Lowrider magazines. It was hot. And then, uh, but growing up, where I grew up in the South Bay, it was all like Uso was like the car club that uh, I would see the most. And then I had another neighbor. He was, I think his family was from. I think they were from like South Central or something. And, and his dad was in individuals and he had like a glass house. And I was like, yeah, that shit is so sick. Damn. Individuals got some some dope rides. They're, pre- they're a pretty big car club. Yeah, Lifestyle might might have been the biggest at the yeah. time. Lifestyle, Majestic, you know, those those guys got. They're on know, the videos, right? Oh, yeah. Back in the days. And we do, you know, I was going to say they're nationwide yeah. clubs, but, and, but we do have members around the world, uh, Australia, uh, Hawaii, which is obviously Japan, domestic. We got guys out there, but yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. we have an actual elite member. Uh, uh, but but yeah, we that Japan lowrider scene is pretty. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, there's that like cholos a, out there. Yeah, it's all like a YouTube <laughs> yeah. uh, episode on like the Japanese. Like uh, he called it like East LA lifestyle. Yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. what they like. And those dudes, like, if you want to sell, if, if anybody in the 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 low the low rider world knows, if you want to sell your car and you have a, a nice low rider, right. those guys will pay top dollar. Top dollar. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. They'll come buy it and ship it, you know. Yeah, and anything. Yeah. And yeah. vintage tees yeah. and Sneaker. record Vinyl. collection, sneakers. Yeah. Because yeah. I think they just appreciate the art, and if they want it, they want it, and they're not going to, like, they don't want to disrespect someone by, like, trying to lowball yeah. them or, you know. Yeah, they love the Western culture, man. Oh, they love yeah. it. Yeah, real respectful. Yeah. You know, anytime I... Over the years, would go out and DJ over there. It's just, you know, when you oh, do you must little, be like a god over there, like Power 106, DJ, like. Well, you know, back in the day, especially yeah. when my records were, you know, hot and yeah, new, yeah. and you know, uh, some of those records like Get Buck, of course, yeah, and yeah. like Pitbull. Um, you know, those Boomerang. songs took me, huh? Boomerang. 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 <laughs> Nick Ferrer's favorite song. I wish Nick would jump out right now and just sing it for you. Yeah, I yeah, fucking yeah. love it. <laughs> he was singing it in his little accent. So funny. <laughs> Boomerang. Yeah. So you would tour Japan a lot? So I would do these Asia tours. And what I was going to say is of all the Asian countries and, you know, nothing against some of the other countries because it was a good experience in most yeah, for places, sure. Korea and China. But J- Japan oh, yeah. were like the, the most super duper respectful catering um and then you know i got guys in thailand i got some of our heavy hitter djs um oh yeah buddha, buddha oh no. yeah yeah and these no. guys would when i would go to, to thailand that was probably the 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 f- more f- most fun experience in really? in Asia, in, in the on the i want to go i need to go man. i haven't gone I back go since with I this came. guy yeah. thai dollar sign i haven't gone back since i moved to this country <laughs> really yeah Came here when I was eight. Ain't never been back. Never been back. No shit. I go to Japan go, all the time and Singapore. My mom's like, why don't you go to Thailand? I was like, I, I can't I come I back and go. do a Tao marquee. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I need to go. I want to go soon. Man, so that that's dope. But I, I want to like, it's so hard to get a timeline with you because yeah. like your career is just <laughs> like, it's and you have a radio show to go to. So we, we'll be here all day yeah. if we really try to go a timeline. Man. But I do know that I've known you for a long fucking time. And I honestly, like, I, I know some of the story, but I don't know at all. Because, you know, when you work with people, you're just kind of peers. And you don't sit there and say, so how did you start DJing? Like, it just yeah. kind of like, what up, Feli? Like, and fuck around and joke with each yeah. other. And, um, but I'm excited to, like, because I saw your entire come up in L.A. Yeah. So I, I, I want to know before LA like because I remember I, like I told you <laughs> off off the mic the first time I met him and I was like damn Feli's mean <laughs> <laughs> but now I understand I didn't I wasn't on the radio yeah, yeah and then when I got on the radio I'm like dude hell yeah get the fuck out of the room when we're recording an artist he had a little Kim in there I, I I'll tell I guess I'll tell the story um I used to go with Echo you know I was his young little uh I don't know. Had one. Yeah. <laughs> Protégé. The young homie. <laughs> and I remember he would take me to the station. First of all, I remember the day you started on Power. Wow. And I was like, 
at this when I met Echo and Vice is when I first started like really getting into radio. Pre that I I was more like just following the house party scene, like a lot of like hard house guys and just um, Richard and not not even Richard, more just local guys. Oh, oh, Cuz yeah. I I wasn't even really listening to Power Tools. I was more oh, just in party scenes, right? Yeah, yeah. And local guys and whatever and then and then once I met Echo, I was like, damn. And then I heard him on the air for the first time with like Sun Doobie. Sun Doobie was like, had the show and he was doing a mix on the weekend. I was like, oh my God, that's the guy I just met, yeah. right? Met him at WP. Anyway, fast forward, started rolling around with him. And then I remember he was like, cause I was mad young. And I think Echo's, you know, Echo's smart. He always had like a kind of like a CEO mentality where he's like, all right, I'm on the radio. Here's this young kid. Let me like pick his brain to see he's more in the demo than I am type yeah. shit, you know? Not that he was older, but like he just saw a, a young Mexican kid and he was like, all right, that's Power's demo. Let me like see what he likes and yeah, doesn't Echo's like. Yeah, always been up on, you know, you know, even with Vice and just, I mean, of course they were friends. Yeah. But, but just knowing. He was even more even the like. like the Neo stuff. Yeah, yeah, dude. He has. I remember when, when he. Because we had the same studio. We took over Tank Studio, which Neo was working out of. And I remember he was like the biggest believer in Neo. And yeah. I'm like, I don't see it. Yeah. I was like, I don't know. No way. And I at, remember finding out. We, we found out about Neo <laughs> because of Echo. He was his biggest believer. Like, yeah. no bro, shit. like nuts. Like, he was just a songwriter. Yeah. And he was like, yo, this dude's a star. And I was yeah. like, really? I, I didn't see it, you know? And I was wrong. Damn. Been yeah. wrong many times. <laughs> me too yeah we i mean that's how it goes you know like dude when we met travis scott we met him as a producer and he was like yeah i rap i'm like sure you do yeah buddy <laughs> sure you do bud <laughs> hey i'm uh, doing an interview with a little cam i need you to leave the room <laughs> yeah so anyway yeah. uh I, uh back to uh i remember echo was like yo do me a favor listen at 7 p.m the new guy this new guy is coming on let me know what you think and i heard you for the first time bro that's crazy the, your first day and I heard you. And I and I remember like I thought you were black. <laughs> like the first for I'm you know, radio, there's yeah. no social media, yeah. like there's no nothing. And it's just the way it's hip hop yeah, station then, and you your young energy. Like yeah, yeah. It, and it reminded me of just like uh I forgot the name of this dude that had a show on like MTV and he kind of had your same like tone, right? And I thought I, for some reason, he, he used to go like on the street and inter interview people. I forgot his name. Damn. Anyway, I, I pictured him on the on the radio, like it was just like a thing. And I was just like, and he goes, "No," he was like, "He's he's not." And I was like, "Oh shit!" And then fast forward a few weeks later, he took me to the station because he had to mix your the ten o'clock slot. And then Lil Kim was up there. And Felly during commercial like took us in, and then felt like you yeah, you were polite about it, but like. We were young and we're like, damn, we just got kicked out. And it was like awkward. <laughs> Fat, like I said, fast forward, me being on the radio and having artists like that. Like, you don't want randoms in there. Yeah, like, it's, was huge get the, the time, fuck man. out, you know? Yeah. yeah. So you were polite about it, but. <laughs> but anyway, I was mean. That was my yeah. first time meeting him. Yeah. So I was like, damn, Philly's mean. Kick this <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> then you got to, you the get, biggest teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> no, the nicest guy. Love this guy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, Love so you. so I guess we don't have to go from how you started. Well, I guess I do want to know how you started DJing. Man, so it's crazy. I, I was telling somebody at Rock Nation, because I told you guys I went I went to Rock Nation last night. And got night. a little break sparks. We got a little sparks sparks. <laughs> <laughs> we were watching Monday Night Football, and I was uh, telling a – uh, a guy from TMZ was asking me. He goes, "Hey man, how's you?" Harvey. Go? Oh God, you're gonna embarrass <laughs> me, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna know his name right now. And then they're gonna talk the shit about me guy? on TMZ. Don't uh, worry, no one listens to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, you're <laughs> silly. Like thirty people. Uh, oh, we got thirty two. Remember? Oh, oh yeah, I'll tell you right now, uh, thirty two viewers. Oh God, what was his name? <laughs> but you know who uh, Harvey is, right? Me. Trent. Was it Trent? Trent. Yeah, Trent. Trent Clark. Okay. What's up, Trent? Um, nice conversating with you, bro. So we were. There's I was, no chance he's watching this. Yeah. But okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'll text him. I'll make sure he okay, watches. Okay, okay. I got you. He's definitely watching now. Uh, hey, what up? Um, so anyway, I was telling 
him and a couple other guys, <clears throat> they are asking me my story. And yeah. I, and so it's, it's, a, it, I last night started remembering things that I had totally forgot. So we're catching you on, uh, right. You on had time. a good time, I yeah, guess, yeah. but not that I wouldn't remember it, I guess. But, um, anyway, when I, I, so I grew up growing up in Atlanta, um, which were you born in Atlanta? Sorry. Uh, I, I was, I was actually born in the, in, in the Carolinas in okay. Charlotte. Yeah. Okay. And, and then my, my, my mom was going to college out there and she ended up getting, uh, remarried and we moved to Atlanta when I was like, I guess I was like five years old. Okay. So I, I, I grew up in Atlanta. Okay. Okay. And, um, so my buddy that lived across the street from me, <clears throat> you know, my day one, Road dog to this day. Actually, we're we're going out of town uh, next weekend to actually Savannah, Georgia, to nice. do a little kickback, laid back little you know Love getaway kickback. with the homies and. Uh, but shout to Tony, <clears throat> Tony Cruz. I grew up with him, and we lived across the street from each other, and you know I'm I'm dating myself, but it was it was back in the in the mid '80s. Mm -hmm. I think this was circa 1980. Three, mm -hmm. maybe eighty four. Um, you know, we we listened to a station, the the big. Um, I, I'm not even going to say it, it wasn't even a hip hop station. It mm -hmm. was the urban station yeah. because in 1983, 84, hip hop was still trying to, to develop, you know, come out of the womb. You yeah, know yeah, I mean? yeah. And so, but V103 played played all the the R and B, you know, funk type music, and. So we, that's where we would hear our, the, the hip hop that was coming out. And I would always hear, you know, Roxanne, Roxanne. Mm -hmm. And I go to Tony's house one day and I see this vinyl laying, I think, on his coffee table. And I'm like, and it says, it says UTFO, Roxanne, Roxanne. And I'm like, wait, this is the song that, that they play on the radio. He goes, oh, yeah, my cousin Lewis, it, Lewis lived on the other side of town in Decatur, left that vinyl. And his cousin was, always bringing like mixtapes over like on cassettes yeah. so we'd hear these crazy to shout to dj edward j anybody that's from atlanta knows dj edward j is like the original mixtape you know god of mm -hmm. not only atlanta in my in my opinion he was one of the first to ever do it mm -hmm. not just in atlanta but we, we we would listen to these dj edward j mixtapes on you know on these cassettes and um Anyway, his his cousin Lewis was always up on the music shit. He was a breaker, and and we we got our break dance on. But he Lewis was the shit. Like he could do suicides and all kind of crazy shit. Damn. So he he had all the music. Anyway, Tony's like, yeah, he left that record. So I ended up taking it home. I'm like, yo, can I take it home? He goes, yeah. And I my mom had one of those old. Um, you remember those old like plastic box they had two cassette decks the radio here and the turntable yeah, yeah, on top yeah my mom had one of those and you know i was just me and my mom and i took the record and i remember putting it on and it had a plastic platter mm -hmm. and i was like i can't this is gonna mess up the record because yeah, yeah. if you remember roxanne roxanne the, the scratch that uh fret um mix master ice did was chip, 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 chip. like that was like the in my opinion the first scratch mm -hmm. like Rid the the pattern yeah yeah and i and so i was like i want to do that ch so i somehow i you know figured that you know i'm gonna put paper towels underneath the uh record oh wow so i took paper towels and i would i would cut the corners wow you know pinch the corners Maybe you don't slip and make yeah. a slip mat wow and i think i'd use two so i'd put one this way one this way and there was the corners i'd take off and then i I put a penny or a dime or something on the needle because I, I realized real quick that it would skip. And um, and I would catch that little and I'd try to wow. do it. And my mom, the volume knob on that that turn that uh, setup was a slider. Yeah. Oh, so I shit. just happened to, you know, most of them are knobs. Right, back right, then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I got, you know, real lucky and it was it was wow. it had a little, you know, unbeknownst to me, that's a fader. Yeah, that's a fader. So I would I, I started doing, you know, catching the little scratch. And man, I thought I was the and shit. I'm sh and I'm assuming it was a belt drive record yeah, player, which is, which is well, even harder. So, so, so remember I was telling you it was a plastic platter. Yeah. yeah. So th it wasn't one of the heavy platters. Yeah. So it actually was. You're moving the whole like yeah. platter. Yeah. Remember some of the old ones that were heavy? Oh yeah. It was like. Yeah. Rrr, rrr. Yeah, this yeah. one was actually really oh, wow. good, and the paper towels helped. <laughs> but I remember calling Tony. I'm like, you got to come over, bro. 
<laughs> he laughs to this day. He tells, you know, when I went on, you know, here it is, however many Google million years later, you know, he's still one of my 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 besties. That's dope, man. And uh, shout to Tony Cruz, but he always when we're out and about or he's visiting L.A. or we're, he's That's like crazy. I, I I started him. That's I dope. started him. He's yeah, safe to say he did. Yeah. Kind of. How did you know to like even like make a slip mat and like use the fa- like use like some watching like rap videos? Or, no, or, I I you oh, know yeah, there were no rap videos well, there, back then. Nah, there yeah. was no rap. There was there was no there was probably no rap videos, and if there was, there was no outlet. Yeah, yeah. for him. So. This was, you know, it wasn't until a couple of years later yeah. that I started seeing videos. Mm. I don't, I, you know, that's, that's, that's crazy how yeah. I think just as humans, we use our common sense, yeah. you know, and you just like try I to. I mean, he just said he met him in like science class. So he was a little scientist. That's true. <laughs> no, I met my boy Albert here oh. in science class oh, at it, Gary it, High it, School. It. But this was in Atlanta. That's a different guy. And t- Tony and I went to school together. Oh, we, the we science played. guy was a car club yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm yeah, tripping. Yeah. Got so it. So this is before I moved to L.A. And then a couple of years later, uh, when I was about 16, my my mom's husband's job moved to LA and that's when I moved to Pomona mm. started going to Gary high school. That's when, that's when I met Albert shout to the, the Alba family who are the gods of low riders. Matter of fact, my boy Albert's uh, getting an award out in Vegas, uh, oh, low riders giving him the uh, lifetime achievement award. No way. Nice. So he, you know, and I just happened to meet Albert in science class he had a V-Dub Trends magazine, or I did, and we noticed, and we're like, hey, what do you know about that? I was like, what do you know about that? And we go out in the parking lot, and he had a bug, six, I think a 61, I had a 66, and that's high how school? we met in high school. You had at a bug Gary. in high school? Yeah, Damn. at Gary. Damn. Lucky. Yeah, I know. Shout, <laughs> shout to the Gary alumni. Um, but, and I played basketball for Gary, um, and, and you know, so I'm going to Gary High School, and I, uh, I, one of the first things I noticed when I moved out here was like, I thought it was the coolest shit that you eat lunch outside. I was like, yo, this is crazy. And it was like, you know, the little concession stand, you can mm-hmm. get your chili Fritos oh, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and every Friday they would let the, uh, a DJ play. Um, wow. And, and this guy would DJ and I would just stand there and I'm, and uh, by this time there was videos out right. and I realized, I noticed, I'm like, those are those turntables. And of course, it was uh, the the twelve hundreds. Yep. But from Atlanta to LA, after your first try with that record, you, did you? That was it. There was. No I was interest. a bedroom DJ in Atlanta. So you were. Yeah. So you kept it going. So when you got to LA, you so were I, still. So DJing by the time I got to LA, I might have had a crate of records. Okay. You know, something like that, maybe two crates. But I was still a bedroom DJ. By that time, I still had that turntable that my mom pretty much was like. All right, motherfucker, you can my shit up, it's yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my stepdad had a turntable. Uh, that became mine. Nice. And so I had so two turntables that were not meant for this shit. Yeah. But I got a realistic mixer yeah. at, uh, at Radio uh, Shack. Radio Shack. Yeah. Not the wood grain Jazzy Jeff one, but the 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 pla- the uh, yeah, plastic no, size. Exactly that, yeah. And um and it had the little tiny transform button, but I would put a I screwed a screw oh, wow. in the plastic button to give me more to grab yeah, onto yeah. and I and I would And the fader wasn't even a fader, remember? It was like a little uh, And it had a click in the middle. Yeah, yeah, it would yeah. click. Oh it yeah. It would stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Damn. I still have that mixer. He's, no way. Yeah. It's yeah. in my studio. I have it. Is that like the up. 18 inch mixers or no? Mm, no, it was, was like, it was like yeah, this it was big. Tiny. Oh, okay. It had like a mic and I think two uh two faders up and down that you yep. could go phono or or line in. Damn, I and, and then it had a fade, but I never used the fader. I always used up and yeah. down and transform, mm. which is to this day yeah. the same. Yeah, you scratch with the fader. I never, to this day. I never scratch with fader with the volume. You I, do, I yeah. use the yeah, volume yeah, yeah. up and down That's to this right. day. Um, but anyway, I, I, I would, I was like mesmerized, and I can't remember the guys. There was two dudes uh, that would DJ, and I think one of the dudes' name was Kevin, and the other dude maybe Tehran. But I remember Kevin had a Jerry Curl. This is like in, God, man, 1987, maybe, 86. Mm, fuck. And so one day, I had been, every Friday, I was just like standing. And every 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 Friday, I'd get closer and closer to him because I felt more comfortable. And somehow, we ended up talking, and they were like, oh, you DJ? Like, oh, you should, you know, you know bring your records next week. And I'm like, holy shit. 
And so I, I brought, I think I brought a crate of records. Wow. And they let me get on for a minute. The first record I ever played in front of a crowd. And when I say crowd, people, it ain't like people are dancing on yeah, a Friday. Like they, everybody's lunch. eating yeah. lunch. They're eating their pizza. But, but there's still people like, <laughs> you know, Fridays yeah, it was yeah, pizza yeah. day yeah. at school. <laughs> That's and, crazy. You had that. But the first record I ever played was Rodney Owen Joe Cooley Everlasting Bass. Damn, that's a good one. Hell yeah. First record I ever played in front of people. Damn. And and it was my record. I'd played it at home, but I'm like, oh shit. That's you crazy. Know? Actually, I don't think it was my record. I think I remember hearing them play it. The first time I ever heard it was like, it's crazy. Like they, it was like they broke that record at lunch on a Friday. <laughs> and it crazy. was Boys in the Hood, Easy E. Those were the two big records and a couple of the Egyptian lover songs. Damn. But that but the everlasting bass was uh Shout to Rodney O and Joe Cooley. That that was the first song I ever played in front of people. That's a great one. And then, because I think we're telling the story of how I started. We, I moved to Dallas a couple of years later and I started doing, we would rent out, well, we would rent out my, my boy, we would break in the little party room at the apartment complex. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, you could rent yeah. out the little rooms. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shout my boy, Sean Robinson, man, that he was, he was a DJ and, and, and I, we would throw these parties and he, when, when he was DJ and I'd get on the mic and vice versa, when I was DJ and he'd get on the mic and what was your would, DJ name at this point? I didn't. It's crazy. You didn't have one. I didn't have. I was like DJ J. Okay. Because <laughs> you know everybody called me J. Because yeah. my name's James. Mm -hmm. And um, and and and, and yeah, I'll, I'll get. I'll tell you guys a little bit about how that my name evolved. But I um, remember what it was before. Felony. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah, we'll get there. That, yeah. Uh. So so I end up. <laughs> 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 I end up. We throw these parties and we would charge five bucks for all the jungle juice you could drink. With a ladle, you yeah, just put yeah. your cup in, mm -hmm. and people would get fucked up, at, and we'd throw these parties, and really didn't make a lot of money, but we have we'd have a shit we'd have a shit ton of fun, and that was how I started like DJing in front of people, and one day, this dude named Carlos, I think his last name was Garcia, he was a buddy of mine's like neighbor that lived in East Dallas, and. Uh, little history about East Dallas is similar to, to East LA. Like mm -hmm. it's the, it's, it's the Latin side mm -hmm. of town. Mm -hmm. And I remember he, he was from East Dallas and he came to one of our parties and after the party and he was an older dude, you know, when I say older, he was probably, cause we were, I was like 19 and he was probably like 30. Oh shit. Yeah. And he, and he was kind of stood out, but my buddy was like, Hey, he's from my neighborhood and he wants to talk to you. And he introduced me to him and he, he's like, Hey, would you ever want to DJ at a club? And I'm 19, right? I'm like, you know, I can't, I'm, 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 I'm only 19. Mm -hmm. And he goes, don't worry about that. You know, he goes, I want to, I want to introduce you to the, this, this club owner. And the name of the club is Hakata club. It was a salsa merengue club. And I was like, I don't know anything about Spanish music. And he goes, they, they need a DJ that can play English music. 20 minutes on the hour. Mm -hmm. And and then, yeah, you know, yeah. 40 and minutes later, off. you yeah, play yeah. for 20 minutes, 40 minutes. And so I was like, all right. So he ends up taking me to the club, introduced me to the DJ. I think the DJ's name was Fernando. And he barely really did. He didn't speak very, you know, good English. And he was excited. I remember the guy was like excited to have me there because he didn't really know a lot about English music. Mm -hmm. And I say it like that. It sounds funny to say yeah. that now, but it was true. Like back then it was like, you know, we would they would literally call it like oh he knows how to play english music yeah because it was still like hip-hop was young yeah so it was like i knew how to play english music and that meant you know don't stop the rock freestyle mm -hmm. it meant planet rock stevie b of course whatever big popular hip-hop songs were back then in 1989 like boys in the hood and you know, which was not uh, party friendly. Yeah, no, really. but I think still they would want to hear you know stuff like that in the club, even everlasting bass. Of course, you know, like we talked about Egyptian Lover, but mm -hmm. it was like, and then house, like I, I don't know if you guys remember Lil Louis French Kiss. Oh, uh, it, it was I a don't. it was a deep under underground house song back then, and and I have a story about that record too because that was where I got the idea, and I had first heard a tempo change in a song. Really? And if you remember, I did that in Get Buck. Yeah. When I yeah. It went when from went 105 to like 88. Yeah. But I got that idea from this record, Lil Louis French Kiss, 
that I used to play because it slowed down from like 122 to like 30 BPMs and a girl started having an orgasm in the middle of the <laughs> of, of the song. Wow. But I, I would play songs like that, house music and like Jungle Brothers, you know, house music all yeah, night right. long. Yep, you know? yep. And, and so that's how I got my start as a DJ. Well, that club ended up, <laughs> ended up getting Rated. shut down. <laughs> oh, not, I mean, you said it, not me. <laughs> and unbeknownst to me, oh, so they offered me a job. They, they were like, hey, you know, they want to offer you a job, 75 bucks a night, Damn. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I was blown away. That's I was like, bread holy back shit. Too. You were I'm 19? like, yeah, I was like 19, you know, making, you know, $300 for the weekend or whatever. And when that club got shut down, I didn't know what the fuck I was going to do. Mm -hmm. And like clockwork, my buddy, uh, shout to Mauricio Reynoso. Uh, what's up? Mean Mouty is what they used to call him. He was a big, like, com uh, not big, but he was coming up as a Spanish DJ playing mm -hmm. a lot of Tex-Mex and Tejano, like Selena type stuff. Yeah. And... Somehow we had met, oh no, no, I'm sorry, I didn't know him. The way we met is I got a call from somebody saying they need a DJ at Escapade. It was a nightclub uh, across, on the other side of Dallas off Lemon Avenue, and I started DJing there, and that's when I met Maudie, and he showed me even more about the Spanish music and like introduced me to stuff like, you know, of course, Selena, but Ramon Ayala and mm -hmm. just a ton Tell of La Mafia and all this, you know, and so we DJ there, we became friends. And then I got a job. Now, at this point, a year later, I get a job offer to do the big, big Latin club in Dallas. Mm -hmm. It was a club called Rhythm Nation. And it was like the, the club you wanted to be at. Right. And Dallas is like Studio 54. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> for the Latin you know, yeah. community. And I, I remember uh, uh, Joe Martinez was the DJ there. And we kind of knew each other, but somehow I ended up over there oh i know what it was the club had a radio show on a on the um on a f uh on a community station called cana win 89.3 and i guess i would come up and guess dj for dude's name's alan hammer and he he gave me a, a really big uh he really helped me big time as a dj because he he used to host this show the club would pay for it, donate to the radio station, and the it's a community station, right. so they would give the club a two-hour, I think it was a three-hour show every Saturday night from 7 to 10, and it was a big frequency. Like wow. It was yeah. like a Power 106, like big 50,000 watts, something like that. So it oh, competed wow. with the other big like 100.3 jams, K104, KISS FM out there in Dallas, and so it was a big frequency. And it was a big deal. Like I had already listened to that Saturday night show mm. for years and other shows on KNON, hip hop shows. This show was more of a freestyle house, you know, type of vibe, Miami bass, you mm. know. And and somehow I met Alan Hammer, the host, and he would have me come up when his DJ couldn't make it, and I was the I would DJ. Wow. And before you know it, he just kind of made me his DJ on the air with him on those Saturday night 7 to 10 shows. And a lot of – sometimes he would be running late, and he would call me, and he'd be like, hey, are you at the station? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I'm going to need you to start the show. And I had my coffin sitting on a counter, and we'd plug it into the – they had this old board with knobs. Yeah. Mm. And I never knew how to run the board because I was always just on the turntable. Mm -hmm. And – that was a huge break for me because um, when Alan would run late, it forced me to figure out how he would tell me on the phone, like, you got, here's what you got to do. And I would like, he's like, just turn that knob on and now your turntables are hot. And, it, and I would just play music until he got there. Wow. But then fast forward months later, he would be like, hey, I'm not going to make it at all. You're going to have to pump up the club and let everybody know wow. what's going on at the club tonight. Because it was really a show to get everybody excited right, to go right. to the club. Yeah. And so that's how I started talking on the mic. But that and DJing. Were you nervous? Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> well, and it was it was difficult because, you know, nowadays when you're on the air and you turn the mic on, it kills the monitors. Right. No back chance then, no. back then. Uh, when I would turn on the mic, I'd have to manually turn down the monitor. It was almost like walk across the room, turn down the monitor, walk over here, wow. turn on the mic. It was it was or awkward. You get feedback. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. 
And I think I found a sweet spot to where I could have the monitor on and it wouldn't feed back, but I could still hear what I was doing. But it was one of those things where I, you know, I'd say Kano in 89.3. It was called the Rhythm Nation Power Hour. And I would say, hey, tonight, you know, come up, come out to the Rhythm Nation, come out to the club, whatever it was, yeah, I would, yeah. he would tell me to, wow. to say. Uh, Ladies in free before 11. Yeah. <laughs> All that. All uh, that. $2 drink specials before 10. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Just the whole promo. But that, that, that was a huge pivotal point for me. Um, you know, learning how to, you know, that was my first experience in radio. Man, that's crazy. Crazy. And I owe a lot to him, man. And thank you for being late a lot, Alan. And <laughs> thank you for uh, giving me that opportunity. It's funny how a lot of people's career start from like a situation like that with someone calling in yeah. sick, going on vacation or being late. Yeah. Like, and then like someone gets in that slot and it's just like even well, the birth yeah. of something and new. I, I always say like, and I've told my kids this over the years, like, What's Don't go the, on vacation. The, yeah, the <laughs> definition of luck is for being prepared for the opportunity and being available. Right. And I I'll, I'll always say, like, if you want to be a football player, sleep on the football field. Mm. And unbeknownst to me, just the love of it, I was just always around it. And I always wanted to be yeah, at yeah. the event or at the this or meeting this person. And I, and I was just available when the opportunity came. Man. You were hungry you know? back then. Yeah. Dude, oh, who's a... Maybe uh, Scratchy might, or I don't know football that well, but like, who's the famous quarterback that like was a backup in the Steve Young? No, like mm -hmm. some like like Tom Brady. Maybe he was like like Young someone too, got though. injured. Oh yeah, yeah, and then he came in. Was it him? Young too. It might have been Brady. Like where where he got he got a chance to play because yeah. like the star quarterback oh, got against injured. all odds at that. And if you're a football fan and I'm wrong, like I apologize. I'm, I'm no, you're not wrong. I might I'm be wrong too. You're probably not right, but you're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but yeah. <laughs> Dude, you re that's true, man. You got to be ready yeah, for the. Oh yeah, Dude, Bledsoe was the main oh, guy. Yeah. But Young and Montana just... had the same kind of story yeah. too, though. Young and Montana. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm sure there's many stories yeah. like that. Oh, for sure. And in a lot of things, like well, dude, like <laughs> just a quick. Our dog, Double A Armin, he was doing the Saturday nights, and he went on vacation to Hawaii, and that's when like they put me in siphon there. Oh yeah, and yeah, that was. Don't go on vacation. <laughs> exactly. Well, and, you know, it's it's great to have these conversations because it reminds you, like, how important it is to keep that hunger. Yeah. You know, and to stay. And it's honestly, I I still have maybe not the same type of hunger, but, I you know, I think I speak for all of us. Like, we love what we do. And some of it can get monotonous at times. Whether man, it's, it's that's human nature, though. Yeah. Like, but dude, I I wake up some days and I'm like, I'm really blessed to be able to, yeah. you know, still do what I enjoy, playing music, you know, and talking on the air, and you know, uh, making and, money. And and Same. and that that was probably him at that point of his life where he was kind of just like. You know, we we all did radio. I used to be late all the time, stop giving a fuck, really. And then, like, yeah. that's probably where he was at that time. And then you were the young, hungry guy that yeah. was like, I I'm on time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then the birth happened. Yeah, I'm not on time. I get there right at the time. I don't <laughs> get there early. Yeah. But I, but I, but at one point we were, you know. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, I've, I had this conversation, and I'm not going to name any names, but somebody at the station recently that I work with. And she was saying, like, she wanted to continue to be challenged because she didn't want this to get old. Mm -hmm. And she was like, how, do, how have you, you know, done this all these years with, you know, my answer to her was when you have a love for something, you know, uh, or I think I said, even when you have a love for something, when you do it all the time, it can get monotonous and you just have to continuously kind of not necessarily reinvent yourself, but remind yourself of how much you love doing it mm. you know because when i and i told her i said you know when i think about it i've come up to this radio station now for it it, it made 23 years actually this month and mm. i was you wow. know i uh so that's how congrats. long we've known each other pretty much yeah, Thank yeah you. congrats and and i and i and i it hit me i'm like holy shit like i've been coming up here every day pretty much mm -hmm. for 23 years mixing you know, every day. 
mm-hmm. you know, and it's, and I still, to this day, it's funny. I, I still, cause she asked me like, you still, like, you still seem like you have fun. I go, I do, you know? And it's like, we joke and say, Oh man, got to You know, got to, got to go, go to, go to work. Yeah. And, you know, uh, but, and, and there is work involved, you know, and it's the same thing for a club, you know, you gotta, you gotta conjure up that spirit and energy to, you know, go out and do it. Man, the fact, the fact that you've been doing LA radio that long, that Crazy. doesn't happen. Like Man. it's, a there's yeah. literally one handful of people that have done that are yeah. doing that literally. And, uh, I'm proud of that. And I think yeah, even with like clubs, like I, at one point was like drained and like, I would like complain to like my family. And then I remember my, I, Oh, we've talked about I, it. Yeah. I would oh, tell yeah. him like, I tell my dad, like, Oh, I got to do here, this, that. He was like, he goes, Oh man. And he goes, good. You're lucky. And I'm like, what? Yeah. I'm like bummed. I got to go. What do you mean? I'm lucky. He goes, yeah. he goes, they still want you. And I'm like, damn. Yeah. You're fucking right. So yeah. And that's the Very same wise. thing. Like, <laughs> you know how it is with radio, bro. Like it's one slot. Yeah, this is th- that's it. It's like clubs too. It's just like man, like this is there's one slot for the opener, one slot for the. It's not like each club has seven DJs. It's yeah. like at one time, like yeah. it, there's one slot, and if you're the one that gets that slot, man, you're lucky. And it's hard, like you said, it's hard to like appreciate that every time because that's just human nature, man. But like I think if you constantly remind yourself, like I remember, I, I had to take a little break. And I took a long enough break um, where I turned down a couple gigs and I just needed a, a time off. And then I remember going back to do a gig and I was I, I was excited again. Yeah. Like I was excited. I had new records I downloaded. I wanted to play them. And like, mm. and, and, you know, yeah. those that feeling doesn't that last feeling. all the time. But but yeah. it was nice to get it back yeah. that one time, you know. Or like pre-COVID though, man, like, you know, we're all jaded, right? And then we we're forced to take a break. And then, yeah, no, I love it. But the problem is, we didn't, we didn't take a break. We we it was different. More than it was ever. like out, we weren't in the club, but like you know, like, and we loved it more though. Yeah, but yeah. Anyway, so yeah, um, <laughs> where were we? Okay, so now you're doing you're oh, yeah. doing the radio. So now I'm doing, in Dallas. I'm doing the it's radio just, station in Dallas, and it and it. So does he fall back? Like, does it, 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 does this become your show? No, no, kind of, but he was, he was still, if I remember correctly, he, it was still his show, but I just did it as I was with him longer. I would do, I was more involved in it. Okay. And I ended up getting a call from, Canowin ended up giving me an afternoon show at one point. And that was a big station there? It, 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 Canada was the community station. They ended up giving me like a Wednesday afternoon, like two hour or may have even been four hour where I could just play whatever I wanted. And I would play all the just whatever the hot, you know, shit was that everybody wanted to hear, mm-hmm. you know, mainly more of a, again, a Latin type following. I'd play DJ Laz, Stevie B. I'd play the hot hip hop yeah. songs, whatever they were. And at this point, it's probably 19... 93 mm. something like that um so you know opp naughty by nature yeah, yeah. And, mm-hmm. and and still playing like the breakdance electric kingdom yeah. stuff and don't stop the rock and debbie deb and um and and i would mix in like selena and you know ramona yala like i would it was oh wow yeah it was it was it was man that, those were probably nice. some of my funnest uh more most fun times um as a DJ um, on the air. Wow. And then one day I get a call from this this lady named Sammy Gonzalez. Sammy Gonzalez did middays on, I knew her from doing 100.3 jams. And that was like the big um, rhythmic urban station that would play, you know, urban, but but also play like a Madonna song or whatever. Right. It was like crossover. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I, she calls, she says, Sammy Gonzalez. And I'm like, Sammy from the radio? And she goes, yeah, how are you? And I'm like, good. <laughs> you know, and she goes, hey, I got your number from so-and-so. And she's like, I am the new program director for this new Spanish station, and I want to offer you a job. And I was like, okay. And she, you know, she goes on to tell me that it's, it's this new 
Tejano station and she wanted to offer me, I think it was the night show from like seven to midnight. And I went on to tell her like, my Spanish sucks. Like, you know, I mean, I can carry a conversation, but if you expect me to interview an artist, that ain't going to happen. Yeah. And she goes, no, don't worry about that. She goes, can, but you can introduce the songs. I'm like, oh yeah. I, I actually, and this is weird. I read Spanish better than I speak it kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, yeah, I, if I have it in front of me, I can read it. Oh, wow. And perfect. You know, I, I can introduce the songs. She's mm -hmm. like, oh, great. So <laughs> I take this job that ends up, leading to me doing afternoons at this station. And I probably did that for about a year. And I, one of the, she left and a new program director took over and none of us really liked the guy. And I think I ended up leaving and going back to doing the, the, the community, the community mm -hmm. the station. Yeah. And then not even, and I did it with my buddy, Ricky Rincon. We, that's when we did the Wednesday afternoons and did that show for, went back to Cana Win for a couple of months. And then one day I get a call from a dude named Nippy Jones that was the night guy at K104, the big hip hop station. Oh, wow. And I knew Nippy because he had a record pool. He was the dude that if you wanted all the urban, okay, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. hip hop stuff. So I knew, because he worked at a radio station. So he had the relationships with all the labels. Yeah. So Nippy, shout to the homie Nippy Jones. He would get all these records. So I knew Nippy because I, I would go to his house, go through records. And we built a relationship, and he knew I produced music, and he asked if I could do an intro for his show. Mm. And so when I was on k and Win, doing, like like I said, playing DJ Laz, Stevie B, down with OPP, Naughty mm -hmm. by Nature, he would use this intro that I did for his nighttime intro on K104. Wow. And it was back. I was yeah. rapping on it. I produced it. I think sure. I got a girl to sing the hook. It was they, the name of their show was the the Tide at Night crew. Do you remember it? <laughs> it's tight at night and it feels so right. It was a chick named okay. Lorena yeah. Vasquez nice. that sang the hook. She was trying to the upcoming singer, and I was like, "Hey, sing this hook. We're gonna do this intro for this radio show." And then I don't remember my rap, but I was like, "You know, it's 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 six o'clock. It's time for Tide at Night. Something." In it. I don't remember what it was, but wow. anyway, I and that's how we knew each other and then that intro ran for like i don't know how long a year and then he asked me for another intro and i that intro ran for i had been doing that for years for yeah. them and then still on kano in and like i had a secret like desire like bro i would love to be on k104 because none of the djs in the latin community you know as as, yeah, as you know like growing up we're you know we're you, you listening to, to hip-hop especially became just so big mm -hmm. like you know no matter if you grew up listening to tejano music or freestyle latin hip-hop you know you 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 had some kind of connection right with hip-hop mm -hmm. right most of us did mm -hmm. you know in my circle and probably you know you guys yeah. circle and mm -hmm. we just that's what it was back in the day and I, I, I used to like secretly wish, like, man, I wish one day I could be on K104. Damn. And, and someone went on vacation. <laughs> well, I get a call from Nippy one day, and he goes, hey, man, they want to meet with you at, at, at the station. And I'm like, who? And he's like, Skip Cheatham and the, 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 the station manager, Ken Dow. And I'm like, really? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, you know, they get, I guess I get, they, gave me his number and I call him and he's like, yeah, we want to, we want you to come in and talk to you about a job. And the next day, 10 AM in the morning, I'm in their office and they offered me 10 PM to 2 AM. And I was like blown wow. away. Nice. And so as we go start talking about what my job would entail, I'm like, man, that's crazy. So I'm going to mix the whole four hours. And they were like, no, you know, and I, you know, I'm used to like having my show on KNON community Make station. Sure. I'm playing whatever. And they were like, they, that's when they broke down, you know, how a format works wow. and how they're going to be. And I'm like, as excited as I was, I, I just remember saying like, oh, I thought I was going to be DJing. Mm. They ended up when they saw my excitement for that. And obviously they knew I was a DJ and they said, well, we, we were going to, you were going to have a part of your show would be a mix. There'd be a mix segment. And I'm like, ah, oh, but it's not going to be the whole show. They ended up kind of meeting me halfway, and they would let they let me do a 20 minute mix at the top of every hour, mm. so 10 to 10, 20, yeah. 11 to 11, 20, 12 to 12, you know, one to one, 20, and um, and that led to me doing evenings. 
Wow. Because you know, Nippy ended up leaving, and they 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 formed a new Tide at Night crew, and it was me, a uh, dude named Rock T, who now does Dish Nation. I don't know if you guys have seen that show. Rock T's on uh, Dish Nation. No. And uh -huh. Coco Butter Brown was, was so we, it was three of us, and we did this evening show, and then they gave me, I was on by myself, on Saturday afternoons and Sunday afternoons wow. as a jock, not yeah, okay. DJing. Not DJing. Just, but then I, but I did the mix show for our six to 10. And that's, that's really how I got known, you know, outside of Dallas because I had, you know, the record reps would right. call me. Yep. And, um, and on Dallas radio, you were felony. I was DJ felony. And, so a little bit about that name. I used to enter these little DJ contests back in the day, and uh, <laughs> I entered this. I entered this contest, and I was just DJ J. I still didn't have. Okay. This was probably in like, I don't know, nineteen ninety one or something like that. And my boys, you know, your boys want to come with you. You're DJing. You know, you got your little five. I think it was like a. You had five minutes to do your DJ mm -hmm. set, and. I never liked DJ battles. I was always so fucking nervous. Yeah. But somehow yeah. I conjured up the, yeah. like, all right, I'm going to do it. And and I was never, like, the greatest, you know, battle DJ, but but still had enough of that in me to, to yeah. do it in a contest. And uh, I was probably just good enough to be in the contest, but one of the worst in the contest, <laughs> right? So anyway, I'm up that there. That would be me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm up there DJing, and there were... Every DJ that went on, I saw this guy on the front row because we were up on this big stage, and he was always, uh, you know, making gestures and yelling shit. Like, just he was into it. And I kind of forgot about it. I go up there. I do my thing. And when I get off stage, my buddies uh, were, they were like, oh, you're bad like a felony. You're bad like a felony. And I'm like, the fuck are y'all talking about? They're like, yeah, the homie on the front row has been yelling. He was doing that the whole time oh, you were wow. DJing. He was like, you're bad like a felony. Wow. I think the dude was kind of like a little crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and well, he but, wasn't heckling. He was actually giving me props. He, yeah, he was giving me props. Yeah. Wow. And and uh, so they, you know, when I was like, yeah, I, they, they're like, that's your new name. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> and, and they, you know, when your homies find out you don't like a name, that's what they yeah, call yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So they would. You could you have know. easily went the J O felony route. Yeah, <laughs> see what you did there. J felony. <laughs> J <laughs> felony. I, that's how the felony name came about, and you know, and I, as as it kind of stuck, I kind of liked it because it was, it, it it was nobody had that name, and it was like stood it stood out because you know most DJs were like, you know, jamming yeah. Jock Martinez or whatever. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's like eras of like. Jamming J. Steve smoking Chavez. Yeah. Shout Slamming out to the homie Steve. Steve. That's Charles' brother. <laughs> Mixing Mike. Who, 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 so Charles Chavez's brother, Steve. Oh, yeah. We came up together in Dallas. Okay. And he was Steve smoking Chavez. Smoking I learned a Chavez. lot from that guy. We, we've we gone on over the years to become really good friends. And nice. I learned, like, I would hear him mix Spanish music. Wow. And he would go back and forth with the Spanish. With the accordion stuff. Wow. And you needed two CDs. Mm -hmm. But I learned that from him. Damn, that's dope. Nice. But, but yeah, then... What the more I was on the air, I this it wasn't a friendly radio name, and I got tired of explaining to people like I've never been to prison. Yeah, a lot of my <laughs> homies have. Not this guy. It's like DJ Homicide. Yeah, remember like he went through a period where he had yeah. to change his name because he was like some people were like they didn't want to fuck with it. Well, like, Vegas, corporate, yeah. especially like Vegas. they were doing billboards, they didn't want to put like Homicide <laughs> on the billboard. <laughs> yeah, so he went like with tonight this, Homicide, DJ Homicide, plus, blah blah blah. <laughs> And he, well, went with, he went with, what, Craig Anthony? Craig, yeah, and Craig Anthony. Now and, he's back to homicide. And it was, I felt like, because as I, you know, <laughs> never went the to circle prison. I was in, some of the guys were getting in trouble, and one of my one of my buddies actually went to prison for like 13 years. He ended up doing Holy 13 shit. years. Yeah. And that was the beginning of me going, you know, this is kind of disrespectful, me having this name. And I saw what his family went through, yeah. And, yeah. and I would, you know, I was going to visit him, and you know, it was it was actually a, that that was my buddy. I told you I came up DJ and okay. we would rent out the little apartment. Oh, shit. you know thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah shout to, shout to Sean. rent out or uh, huh? Broken. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I so I that was another reason I was like, yo, I I, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's sure. that's not cool. So yeah. You know, so then it became so everybody 
you know, I had a, my name was big at that point in the city. And of course, you know, when your homies know you, they're like, oh, we don't call him felony. We call him fell or uh, felony. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. the homies, they want to show you that they're embrace, you know, that you're, it's like, you know, it's like, like, like I don't call my son James. I call yeah. him Jaimito or I call It's like him, girls yeah, don't call yeah. Diplo, they call him Wes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Cuz they want to be like act like they really yeah, really yeah, yeah. down yeah. with you. They really know Sunny. you. <laughs> yeah, oh, and I just oh, you know stuck Sunny. with that. It was yeah. fell. It just it felt right. And then of course everybody's like, "Why would why would you call yourself Felly Fell?" Like you know. Wait, so it you so was it ever just fell or it went So they would call me Felly Okay, Felly, and, got and it. And Felly fell. And then some some of the homies would just say fell. And got it. so I just stuck with the whole DJ Felly fell thing. Uh, remember and Selly Cell? Selly Cell. Yeah. 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 <laughs> was he from the Bay or something? Or? Yeah, oh, he yeah, was yeah, from yeah, the Bay. Yeah, Selly Cell. Damn, okay. So Felly yeah. fell. And then you came from Dallas to LA? Yeah, so, so uh, the story from from Dallas to LA was you know I, I was telling you guys like I met all these you know program um, these record promoters and one of the record promoters that I met rest in peace was Buys One yep oh, I yes. remember rest and RIP Buys I mean he 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 really the dude changed my life because Man, he would come out to Dallas you know he was go he would go around the country promoting records and you know, one of his stops was Dallas. And so when he would come to Dallas, me and him would hang. And we just had a lot in common. Uh, he knew about, he kind of grew up with the same music that we did. Yeah, yeah. And we would have these conversations. I remember one day uh, he, he came out and he was working one of DJ Quick's new albums. Uh, God, I can't remember that album to save my life. Uh, but he, he was, this was like in 99. Mm. And, and, um, we, I remember sitting in his car just playing. Was it this, the one with a uh, pitching on a party? And pitching all that? on a party. Yeah, 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 that's what it was. Okay, it was that album. Uh, God, it's, bu it's bugging the shit out of me. I can see the album cover. R r rhythm and r yeah, it's like a blue and pink. Oh, quick, quick. I'm sorry, on. bro. <laughs> and the rhythm. fact checker is scratch. Oh, he he just left. Oh, no, I'll find it right <laughs> now. Our fact checkers. No, it's on. rhythm and something. Hold on. It's yeah, it's rhythm, rhythmalism quick. or something like R that. Yes. Was that what it was? It's. Hold on, it is called. But we played, we played that. Yeah, rhythmalism. Rhythmalism. Yep. Rhythmalism. I would never remember that. We we played that album. Ninety eight. Like over and over in his car, smoking out. Yeah, that was a dope album too. Though. Man. Shit. But that's that's how I met Buys. And one day, fast forward, like a, probably like I don't know, maybe a year later, uh, I I I I took a week off and decided to come out to L.A. because yeah. you know I wanted to shop my beats. Yeah. So I set up a bunch of meetings with record labels and buys knew I was coming out and he calls me and he goes, Hey, what, you know, I know you're in town. He goes, what are you doing? Like Tuesday, we're going to go play ball yeah. at DJ quicks house. Oh shit. And, and I'm like, Oh shit, count me in. And so he's like, I'll come pick you up. So he comes and picks me up at the hotel. I was saying somewhere in Hollywood and he goes, Hey, I got to buys is like, I got to make a stop at, uh, Power 106 to drop, I think he had to drop off some records. And we get to Power, I said, okay, and we get there, he goes, come up with me. So I, I come you up. You were to, obviously aware of Power and yes, how big it yeah, was. Yeah, I was, I was aware of the Baker Boys. Got it. Oh, yeah. and, okay. and, 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 and Big Boy mm -hmm. um, and, um, and Julio G. Those, those were the names that I, that I from knew LA. from L.A. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah, yeah. Julio was on the beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout to the homies, man. They they changed the the culture yeah. Uh, yeah. in okay. LA. So and so I'm so I'm in the hallway and Buys is in there talking to this like short little Filipino dude. <laughs> it wasn't five. No, um, it wasn't Nick Ferrer. <laughs> right, it wasn't Nick Ferrer. <laughs> Who could it be? Um, he's in there and I didn't know E Man at the time, but so he's having this conversation with this dude and I'm respectful, like just hanging in the hallway, looking around, and all of a sudden they motion for me to come in and. Buys introduced me to E-Man, and, and E-Man's like, yeah, I keep hearing a lot about you. You're doing your thing in Dallas. And he goes, you know, we're looking for, potentially you're looking for a night guy. Wow. And I think they had let Sun Doobie go. Johnny Cuervo was doing nights. Mm, and damn, he was kind of, I guess, it was in the interim, mm. you know. Um, and anyway, I said, I think he's like, do you have a, a, a demo? And I'm like, oh, I'm not up 
I'm not in out in town for radio stuff. I'm out here shopping beats. And I remember E-Man's like, oh, you produce music? And it, I remember him getting kind of excited. And he's like, I want you to meet our our one of our new bosses. And it ended up being the new program director, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. And Jimmy he Steele. goes down, he goes down the hall and you know, this white dude comes back down the hall with him. And <laughs> I'm like, this is the program director of the station. Cause <laughs> oh, yeah. I yeah, it was, it was, it was a little different. When I was where I came from, but but uh, I shook his hand and he goes, "Hey, you know, hearing good stuff about you, we're looking for a nice same thing that E Man said." Yeah, and he goes, wow. "You had a, a demo, air check tape," and I go, "I I'm like not out here for radio." And same conversation with Jimmy. He mm -hmm. goes, "I tell you what, when you get back to Dallas, make a little demo and send it to me." So I did crickets. Wow. And I and I remember the girl I was dating with that 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 I was dating at the time. I remember after a couple of weeks went by, uh, I was like, yeah, I was kind of like down about it. Yeah, yeah. I was of like, course. fuck, what, what did I not have, you know? Did you do a demo sp specifically for Power or you just recorded your I literally, show as usual? Because I was, uh, I, I may have like made a couple changes, but I think I just put a cassette in. Yeah, you yeah. know, when you when you turn on the mic, it would record. This yeah. is 2001? This is like 99. Oh, 99. Yeah, I think it was like the... It may have been like the end of 99 or beginning of 2000, yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, real quick, I want to fact check us. It, what, a pitch in on a party was the album after Rhythmalism, Balance and But Rhythmalism and options. came out, I think, in 99. Okay, so right? I just wanted to, like, someone okay. to be listening, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. man, pitching on a party wasn't on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Get the comments and shit. That was Down, Down, <laughs> Down and uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Gangsta. Down, down. Gangsta. Uh, Music Gangsta. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that that album that album was lit. But, okay, anyway, go ahead. <laughs> um, shout to Quick. So crickets. So yes. crickets didn't hear anything, and I, you know, and I, I kind of just tried not to. I was like, whatever, you know. And I, I had my son, and and that was the excuse that I would use to be like, I can't leave anyway. I, mm. you know, I, I got my son yeah. here, and um, but it would it bothered me. Well, fast forward like weeks after that. Oh, anyway, I, anyway, I tell my girl, she's like, don't worry, they, you know. They'll probably call her. You know, she's doing what a girlfriend does. To yeah. Kind of, you know, Be supportive. make you feel better. Yeah. And uh, comfort you. Comfort me. And so I end up getting a call weeks later and he's like, hey, it's Jimmy Steele from KPWR. And I'm like, oh, what's up, man? And he goes, dude, I'm sorry. I just went on a second honeymoon with my wife to Hawaii and we're barely getting back. And I'm like, oh, shit. And he goes, hey, we really love your demo. And he was like, man, you know, big boy heard it. Big boy loves it. Shout to shout to Big. Um, mm -hmm. You know he he was a big a big no pun intended a big reason why. Wow. Because they I think they really trusted Big's ear. Mm -hmm. And um, he he's like man we really want to we really want to bring you out. Yeah. We're we're having our our big yearly powerhouse mm. coming up. And I didn't know what the fuck that was. And he yeah. was like it's basically our big concert and we got so and so performing. It was like huge names like Jay Z and this and that. And I'm like wow. oh damn. And so I, I I took time off, went out there that weekend. I think it was like two weeks later, and that was my first introduction to Power. Was at Powerhouse. Damn, that's and crazy. Wow. I remember we <laughs> Powerhouse was over, and Jimmy was like, "Hey, uh, why don't you go get on the air?" And I'm like, "Right now?" And he goes, "Yeah." Fine. He goes, "He goes, he's like." He goes, there's a board op up there. I just want you to do your thing. And it was like, by this time, it's like midnight. Wow. And he goes, and then me and me and my wife will pick you up in the morning for breakfast at your hotel. I was staying at the Sheraton in uh, Universal City. Yep. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they, I, I get on the air, and he's like, just do some basic talk breaks, whatever. And I remember being nervous as shit, because remember, I still got a job at oh, yeah. K104. And they in don't Dallas. know you went down there. And and I I remember telling telling Jimmy I was like, you know, and I remember him going, I ah, don't worry about that. Yeah, there was no so social media back then, so you know what it was. And he, yeah, in his mind though, well, because record let record people talk. That's true. That's and I was true, worried yeah. that a record rep was gonna go back to my program director yeah. or or yeah, or, I heard Felly trying out in L.A. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, heaven forbid, like I don't end up wanting to be in L.A. Now I don't yeah, have a job. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I, I, all this shit was going through my head. But I, I, I did. I was on the air for like an hour or two. Go back to the hotel. The next morning, they picked me up. Uh, him and his wife pick picked me up to go to breakfast. And that's when he's like, "Hey, we really, you know, we're really interested in in offering you, you know, a, a, a job." 
Wow. And I just remember, like, I was, it was, it was like, I was like, deer in the head, like, that. I was just amazed. Yeah, yeah. And I get on the plane, go back. He's like, go, go think about it. I go back to Dallas. And all I could think about was my son, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I, I just, I was just like, I, don't, I can't. And ironically, it was, it was my son's mom. Shout to, shout to Madi, um, Maribel Torres. She, she was very uh, influential in mm -hmm. telling me, you know, this is something I know you want. Don't wow. worry about Junior, you know. Go, you know, you're, how old you, was this, your son at the time? Oh gosh, uh, James was probably four. Wow, oh, shit. you know, and he's at this like age where just super cute, you know, four, and and I'm, you know, I'm trying to be the best dad, you know, that I mm -hmm. that I could be, and that was a tough thing for me. Yeah. So what I did is, so I ended up taking the job. I move out here, and I would fly back like once a month to Dallas yeah, yeah. and I would fly him out and you know, he was still young and, and I think he could, his mom wasn't, I was all for it. Like let him fly by himself. And she, <laughs> so every nah. time I wanted him in LA, cause you know, they, they'd put you with the, the, the stewardess or what is it? The flight attendant. Flight attendant yeah. yeah. And, um, and that would have been like God sent for me, but instead I had to fly wow. out, pick him up, yeah. take him back to LA he would stay with me sometimes just for the weekend mm. and I'd bring him back. And then on special occasions, he would stay the whole week. I did that for years. Wow. And that was, you know, it was, and honestly, it's a blur because mm -hmm. people are like, that had to have been hard when you're like, when it's your kid and yeah. you just love this, yeah, yeah. this, this kid, you know, it was, it wasn't. Yeah, and it was. It was actually was like I was always so excited to go get him and, mm -hmm. or come and visit, and, mm -hmm. and you did so much. It became like a routine kind of. Became yeah. a, became became a routine, yeah. and you know, it was it it, it was it, it weighed on me because I know, I know it affected him. Not, you know, I I made a conscious decision to not be in the same city as 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 my little man. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and it bothers me to this day, but James ended up, you know, as he's do gotten you, older, do he you turned think, out good. Yeah, and he has a legendary drop. Power 106, you heard? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's him? That's him, yeah. Oh, that's dope. How old was he when he did that? Oh, God, man. That was when Vinny was producing my show, and he used to, I used to put a Lion King. Like I still 03, have the Lion King. 03, 04? Huh? Like 03, Yeah, it was probably, he was probably like six or seven. Yeah. Do you think if you would have stayed in Dallas, you'd still be on rate? Like your career would have went the same way? Oh hell no! Yeah, I think I think I would have potentially had a pretty you know good career. But so then, why do you say it still bothers you that you left? Because I mean, when you're making a conscious decision yeah. to you know leave your your seed, yeah. but you know and and you know and I like think I you said, did a good job though. Yeah. Like no, you didn't you. like abandon him. No, you know no, what I mean? Of course not. Like we, do you still Jay play football? Huh? Does he still play football? Uh, he played all through high school, but yeah, not done? anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he he ended up. So James ended up going to Texas Tech, uh, and then my daughter, which is another story. Yeah, you that's, know, a, um, that's a great it, story too. It ended up, um, and the long story short is I didn't I didn't meet my daughter and, and until she was like thirteen or fourteen. Yeah, I remember. Old. But uh, she ended up going to San Diego State the year after James went to college, mm -hmm. and James his second year was like, yeah. I want to be in San Diego with my sister, Dad. That's dope. So James ended up going to San Diego. Then he went to Santa Monica College, um, but my daughter did the whole four years out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, it was, James had a, you know, an interesting upbringing because he was, he had the kind of grounded time in, in Dallas with his mom uh, and his stepdad, Robert, who, who was, who's a great guy. You know, I got real lucky with, mm -hmm. with you know, that, but, um, and then coming out to LA, you know, he, he had that, you know, got to see, you know, different things. Yeah. And it it kind of, kind of made him who he is. You know, he's, he DJs and he has his own clothing company. Oh, nice. And he's, you know, he's living, living here. You know, he's been in LA now for gosh, probably six or seven years. Nice. What's yeah. his clothing brand? Uh, it's called Amor Enfermo. 
Nice. Oh, and uh, and he does a he does a lot of collabs with his buddy uh, that has cozy uh, uh, clothing brand. Shout out to Jordan. Mm -hmm. uh, but that yeah, man, he's super talented. I'm super proud of him. You know, he's he's still trying to you know figure out how to make everything yeah, yeah. work. But yeah, man, it yeah. was it was a it was a tough thing for me mm -hmm. with with that. And I and it, I I've you know I think selfish is the word I'm looking for. Like I felt like at times like you know I was being selfish and and but but I mean what, I think it was you selfish is not because I think you're you moving here and having a better career for you is I know you had the, your son in mind and your girl in mind I did. you know so like I think you were making oh, moves for them yes. without knowing yeah. and 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 I would tell myself that to make myself feel better but it really it really was and James um he was honestly I don't think I'd be here if it wasn't for him yeah. because he was such a motivation yeah. for yeah. me like he was you know and and I think he knows it, but I, I, but he, you know, especially as as he as years have gone by and he's gotten older, your kids get older and they they start realizing things. And I think James, you know, knows that, you know, I think he looks back and probably was like, how the fuck did my dad do that? Yeah. You know, he must have really liked me. Yeah, no, yeah. dude. He, no, it's true. Like him. as we get older, you start realizing certain things. Yeah, like you I used to be like, damn, my dad's never home, my mom's never around, but yeah. like they're working. So I mean, he was much. Well, in your for case, us. they really didn't like you. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was flying at Thanks. four years old, man. Don't like, worry, my parents yeah. didn't like me either. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and also me not really having that relationship with my with my father, that was something that you know was always on my mind and i was like he he's gonna know who his dad is and, and don't get me wrong now now my dad and i have a really good relationship uh for the shoot last 15 so years oh wow nice. okay yeah so I, you, I love did you just meet him 15 years ago no I, okay. I i knew my dad he just wasn't really around but we we had you know i think it was probably around the time i hit because he i don't want to get deep into the story but yeah when i was younger uh he he basically um you know he just stopped doing the child support thing and yeah you know and 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 in his defense you know and i learned this later my mom didn't make it easy on him got know? it and got it. so i you know you start getting older and you start putting the pieces together yeah, and you talk saying. to your aunts and you're this person and you're like oh shit. and then as i got to know my dad as an adult um i realized like dude he's a sweetheart Mm, you know and yeah. i i was like and then now we have this great great relationship That's i'm great, actually man. going to see him uh we're we're going to a football game uh Fl clemson florida St or um we're going to the unc tar hills clemson game uh in in november nice so. damn so now you're at power uh i mentioned that's where i first met you i remember your start and i mean radio at that time was a m huge deal like it was yeah. there was no streaming oh yeah uh hip hop is was like at the peak like you 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 obviously started in in radio from the beginning it's developing and now at this point it's just like it's the number one uh genre you know like it, it's the number one station in LA yeah. it's over it's beating pop it's beating whatever mm -hmm. so there's so much shit we could touch on but like there's <laughs> every artist came through there every record you broke you you have war stories hell <laughs> story there's some shit we, we obviously we're not that type yeah. of podcast we don't need to like yeah. talk crazy shit because i know you you've mm -hmm. been through some shit you know so yeah i mean you, you you know how it is as a dj you know everybody wants you to play their song and i ended up finding myself like at the pinnacle, the, at the at this huge level that I never ever had dreamed I would ever reach, and you know you start getting phone calls from you know these huge executives, and it got to the point where you know big huge artists I would you know I would get phone calls you know you know and I, I remember <clears throat> just being overwhelmed like. You know, I remember one day on, on the phone with my mom saying, man, I didn't I didn't sign up for this. Like, I didn't know it was going to be, you know, I just had a love for music. 
you know, I was a DJ. Yeah. I never thought I'd ever be in radio. Yeah. Like I was a I was a DJ producer <clears throat> that that happened to fall upon radio. Yeah. And just to always, you know, one day wake up and you're like, man, I'm in this like amazing position, but it came with a ton of responsibility. Just the hardest thing for me was, you know, and I've always said, like, how do you tell somebody their baby's ugly? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it was like, and especially for, for the irony of it is as a producer, it hurts when somebody doesn't gravitate toward your your shit uh, yeah i've i've been there too yeah and it's it's very personal you know and when they you when you play for someone and and they don't react the way yeah, you, you like, react you're like damn my shit yeah sucks. why aren't sparks fucking flying out of your yeah. ass like they were when i fucking <laughs> yeah. did don't you hear that part what <laughs> yeah. i did how genius didn't you is catch that, that? Yeah, yeah. yeah 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 no for there's sure there's a meme or something i saw about you know it's like uh, how producers want people to react, and then Versus it's like how, how people really react. Yeah, no, like for when sure. they play their beat, and the, the dude's face is like, "That's cool." You don't notice it's how like, every other snare is a different one. I try to be creative. Yeah, 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 every yeah. other snare yeah. is different. Yeah, the great reaction is like, "Yeah, it's, it's cool." There's only I'm reverb like, well, on the you. other every other snare. Okay, yeah. you guys don't catch that. <laughs> Not for real, bro. It's fucking crazy. But that that was, and also you 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 uh, had the reputation of being like a record breaker. You were kind of like becoming that guy. Like, yo, I'm the record breaker. You even had like a drop, the record. Like, yeah, Jermaine did a drop for me. The record breaker. Uh, the record maker. The record, record maker breaker, and the record breaker. Yeah, yeah. You and know. Then, and then you had the woke call. Oh, that's a, there's so much call. shit we could talk about your show, bro. To me, I will say this. I, I like I said, w when you came on to, to power is when I first, started developing my love for radio was when I first said, damn, this is what I want to do mm. because I came up, you know, listening. Uh, I, I, that's when I started listening to Echo and Vice and discovering other people Then Melody. And I'm like recording Melody. I'm recording Mr. Chalk. And I remember when you started Gods. doing your show, it was the first time I heard a real production, mm. like, intros and you had like you were consistent with your beds or like mm. i would hear your beds and be like oh shit this felly oh, show yeah. like you had the same beds like big boy was good at that like big boy used to use like uh what's the blue cheese and uh what's the, the phone the phone um phone, phone tap, tap for that yeah. like he was good at the um at having the same beds but so did you at, at to the point where i think we used to use your beds when Cypher oh, and and they, they were they because they were they were in they the, were in in the your, orbit or whatever thing. it was yeah but um, it was the first time where it's like, all right, man, this shit is like well put. Like, like you would start your show, and then you'd have the woke call, and everything had an intro and well produced, bro. Like I love that to shit. Vinny. Vinny and I would the shout freaking reeking, freaking reeking. We played golf recently. Shout to the Barb's Johnny Barber too. No, <laughs> yeah, um, Barber. Man, you know, I, I always had like you know, you have a vision of how you want your show to sound or just a DJ in general, like how you, you know, and I, and I was, took a lot of pride and still do. Um, and it was, man, it was just so much fun. Yeah. Like you're coming up with like, what bed am I going to use or what element on my show? Like the woe call, that was something that to this day, and then we ended up, you know, we ended up, uh, singers would call up and we'd say, well, you know, it's only rappers. And then one day I told Vinny, I'm like, what if we do uh, the, the soul call? Yeah. With oh, the, for wow. singers. So, and that's where Miguel, yeah. first time he was ever on the radio, he was a soul call parti par participant. No way. Dude, that's I why to know. this day, I'll get text. He was with uh, Minus at yeah. the time. He was yeah. with Minus. Dude, I'll get a text here to this day sometimes like, dude, I'm in fucking Oklahoma and Miguel just shouted you out on stage or it, it, random that's, places. That's Mainly dope. it's in He's LA. He's a good dude, man. He'll be like, man, I first guy. got my start in LA and he'll, he'll touch a little bit on the... And it, it's like stuff like that is is pretty cool. Ironically, uh, a lot of people got their start from your show, and they a lot of people don't remember that. Well, and, and same with us too. Like, I, 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 when I back to what I was saying about being overwhelmed. You know, when you get a call from somebody like a P Diddy or something like that, it's like, hey man, I'm in town. You know, come over when you get off your show, and I'm just like, uh, and and I, I mean, like you said, we we would. And we'll do it again. We'd need a lot more time for me to. I got some cr just crazy we stories. We definitely need a part two of just stories. I got to tell you the Diddy story 
when when I got off the air one night and I and I came to to his house in in, in Beverly Hills. Okay. I'll, I'll tell that's 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 a pretty long story, but uh, but that was when I first met him. And yeah, so I you know I I had the at the privilege of uh, meeting these artists right, right. and you know rubbing shoulders with them and obviously as a producer you know um you know i would i would i got to the point where i'd finally my i had a voice not just on the air but i would speak up and be like hey you know i do beats mm -hmm, and I, mm -hmm. I was always nervous as shit to play my beats mm -hmm. and, and and i remember getting shut down one time and it hurt oh dude you talk about like hurt my heart and, and it's actually speaking of dj quick um he was in a studio in burbank mm -hmm. i can't remember the name of the studio it was off magnolia mm -hmm. um it wasn't boom boom room it wasn't will smith's but anyway i went to play beats for busta rhymes and i go in the studio i uh, and busta's in there and DJ Quick's there and exhibit, oh, wow. and I and I and I have these beats on a CD, and I put the beats, you know, in, in you know, we start playing beats, and dude, Quick like kept it like the realest of the real, mm -hmm. you know, because he's like a oh, like nerd. Bro, he, I I like rapped in front of him once, and I was like, what was I thinking? Oh yeah. Anyway, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Idiot. What were you thinking? <laughs> um, so so he likes critiquing my beats after I finished playing in front I, of Busta. In front of Busta and okay. exhibit, and Busta's like, you know, kind of sitting there. It was like, and, and and basically, quick in a nutshell. And I think I was even like, okay. And he goes, yeah, basically it's, it's whack, and like I, straight up. Oh, dude, it, and I was like, wow, oh shit. And I remember leaving the studio. But let me tell you. It was the best thing, and that you ever never happened. and you never played his music ever again. <laughs> no, <laughs> of course, no. Quick's no, one just, of my favorites. No, I'm no and it, and you know, we Quick and I went on to you know, we over the years we we'd have these conversations about SP twelve hundred because yeah. that's that's what I started off with, mm -hmm. and say, obviously same with him. And but uh, but yeah, man, that that conversation. First of all, he gave me some really fucking good criticism, good right. advice. Which is not easy for an artist to do. So in credit to him, like for him to be honest with you, which you can break, you can fuck his whole career oh, he, up. Yeah. And he knows that. Him. He didn't give a fuck. He, he knew, well, and he knew your, the power you had of playing his stuff yeah, and he but, still kept it honest. Yeah, which is like he's kind also, of, that's, he, he's, he's already DJ just an, quick at this point. But like, still, like. You know, he, let's just keep it real. No, I know, but come on. Yeah, no, he he is a real one. You know, he was, you know, and I, I, but here, but I'll tell you how I felt when I left. I was like, that son of a bitch. Yeah, <laughs> you know, oh, and I got sure. drove home just, man, fuck that guy. <laughs> no, I don't think, I just remember like thinking to myself, man, you know, that I just couldn't believe it. I was just, I was in shock. But I took, in some of the stuff he said and i was just like you know he's fucking right what was some of the stuff he said do you remember I don't, it was you know quick is all about he's so deep like sonic -y. with sonic, sonic yeah, yeah, you yeah. know you know uh, uh just you know just and i and i honestly it's funny you say that i don't think i really a hundred percent took in and understood like that's why i was like well what are you trying to like what do you mean and that's when he was like dude it's it's, it's whack and i was like fuck me <laughs> but but it was basically, you know, about the mix, you know, and and also probably just you know just the overall like yeah sounds ev everything. everything. And were I they, just, were they samples or was it some of it was sample, but most of it wasn't. Most okay. of it was was uh, original stuff because you know I I play enough to you know yeah get off a little melody and and I can hear something and replay it or okay. play play most of my songs from Get Buck to finer things those are not replays those are not samples that's me fucking around and finally going oh oh and okay. then looping it just Got playing it. and anyway i i that was very very impactful that day in the studio and i remember just going back to the drawing board and you know just 
you know, you just, you try to perfect your craft. When somebody like, you know, a DJ Quick, yeah. you know, basically says that ain't, you, that ain't the business. Yeah. And, and I, and I, I can't tell him enough or anybody how much that meant to me. Cause like you said, not many artists are going to really keep it real with, yeah. you, you know, and, and, and DJs too. DJs will tell an artist like, Oh, I love it. That shit's yeah. dope as fuck. And then never play it. Yeah. Is, you know, there, is there is there oh, wait are, were you gonna tell a Diddy story or you're saving that? He's saving it. It's a long yeah. story. Okay. <laughs> it's a long fucking story, and 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 I'm about to have to go, go do a radio show. Air. But um, was there? Can you remember a situation where you told an art a big artist that his song wasn't it, and their reaction? Oh yeah. <laughs> can we talk about it? <laughs> or, um, yeah, that's another long story. Okay. Uh, that's another. I got man, I got a ton. I wish we 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 would have got to story time a little more. But Shit, you do man, I love to do now. part two, man. No, we have you to know, do part two because yeah, there's so. Sure. I, I still wanted to ask, like, being on the radio today, you know, like you said, twenty twenty years later. Well, twenty years on in LA radio. Like, I want the to know the pros and cons because people ask us to this day, just knowing I have a background in radio like if they should be on the radio and 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 the benefits and the, so i wanted to ask you like you've seen it all like the the current state of radio what are the pros what are the cons I wanted to ask that I wanted to ask like scratchy wanted to know like publishing stuff mm. about like what you make records and mm -hmm. the, a lot of big ones that get played to this day so there's yeah. damn there's so much shit we want to touch on Fuck. I, I'll, I'll touch on um i'll touch on this because it's i think i can do it short and sweet the, the pros and cons of radio. So one of the pros for me was being privy to the meeting these artists. Yeah. And it served me well as a producer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and I think, you know, for... Uh, I happen to... I know it probably scared the shit out of some artists at point sometimes where I'd be like, hey, I'm a producer. And they're like, oh, fuck. Like, yeah. what if I don't, what, do you, what if he sucks and yeah, yeah, I don't want to yeah. be on the shit? And I, and I, I think that my production was, <laughs> was just good enough to where artists were like, yo, this is actually dope. Mm. You know, I remember when I sent, uh, played Finer Things for, for Kanye and <clears throat> he, he loved it. You wow. know, and I, I just remember thinking like, yeah, fuck yeah, you know, Damn. and it's like, I and, I, and when he got on, not to cut you off, when he got on Finer Things, this was his like, he was big as a producer too, like he was, yeah, he because you know he, he, fast forward, he stopped producing shit. Not that he doesn't, he's not involved, but like, he was known as a producer for other people, yeah. producing for Brandy, producing for whoever, right? Game, yeah, and I remember thinking that it wasn't gonna get cleared because his mom passed and he mm. wasn't doing any features. He wasn't doing anything. And I just remember thinking like, and this was going to be my second single after get buck. You know, it was going to be finer things with Kanye, Jermaine, Neo, Neo and fabulous. And I remember thinking like, there's no way they're going to clear. Kanye's not going to want to do this. He's not doing shit. He doesn't yeah. want, he probably doesn't want people to be like, wow, you're not, you're not really mourning, right? You know, you're out here on this record right about this time. Raise your glasses, you know. That's how yeah, it yeah, first yeah. started, and by the grace of God, he in the in the label cleared it. Wow! And wow. and I I just remember being elated, but but I that those are some of the pros, you know. Obviously, having access to these big artists, and 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 I did have stuff that was good at, you know, cause none of these artists would have got on these records if, you know, the stars aligned for me yeah. right? with that, in that, in that regard. But, um, and then <laughs> the cons, uh, Wait. oddly enough, is dealing with those artists yeah. and dealing with labels and trying to, you can't please everybody. And it's like, dude, I didn't sign up for this. And I remember one day somebody goes, no, but you did. You did mm. sign it. This is, comes with the territory. Politics, right? And I remember, you know, thinking to myself, well, not even politics, just not, I never wanted to be that guy who has to tell somebody that this thing that they just spent hours upon hours and pouring their heart into is not was in single. vain. And it, yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's like, because I know how that feels. And it was never, 
and to this day it's not you mm-hmm. know a fun thing and, and and i don't deal with it as much as i used to because you know thank god there's other outlets you know <laughs> yeah. out there now uh, when to your point earlier radio back in its heyday was like this is the only place that you can get a break That's and it. now it's kind of i don't want to say the opposite but it's now it's like hey you know show me what your song's doing out there on TikTok, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, there's yeah. so many a- avenues so many. To, to to go and have your record, you know, grow some legs, and but yeah, the cons are just the uh, and if I had to name another con, it would be I I really think it affected my club stuff mm-hmm. because you know and it and it's and it and it, and it hurts because you know I know what a great DJ I am. I know what I bring to the table when it comes to outside of hip hop, when it comes to whether it's a little bit of house stuff or whether it's, you know, freestyle or Latin stuff. And to not really have that same opportunity to to shine and showcase my abilities like I did when I was younger, Mm -hmm. it hurts. And me and you have talked about that a little bit. We talk about this a lot, yeah. And it's like, fuck, man, you know, uh, I, if, if, if I could have one, and it's odd to hear me say this, you know, with I have had a lot of success, but I miss the days of being able to go out and do clubs. You know, we're talking pre-radio. Right. And mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. I mean, you guys know I've done a lot of clubs over the years. I've traveled. Um, and But I, I wish that I could do more, you know, open format type clubs mm-hmm. on a regular basis. But... You know that whole world doesn't doesn't look at Felly Fell as as an Eric Deluxe or or a five. Do you and think Do you think it, it's because you came out with hip hop records or what do you? Because I I feel like I came in radio. You got yeah. like people like Justin. So, yeah. so like, do you think it's because you actually had hip hop songs, which you got, you even had dance songs. So I'm trying to like understand. I think it's the name. Just let, let me also say this, you know. I I I probably could have stood to try to build certain relationships that you know and I guess it's you know your ego kicks in and you're like it's like have you ever have you ever had somebody like you know when it comes to a club say well they want to hear a demo and you're thinking to yourself motherfucker you know what I do yeah, yeah, like, yeah, well, yeah, that, yeah that's yeah. how I I felt when Got it was it. like you know it's like well you know what I have to offer like why do I need to go to lunch with you and fucking tell you why I'd be a great yeah. DJ at your club in Vegas or at yeah. your club in Hollywood, whatever. Yeah. And I, and so the ego part of me probably got the best of me at at some point in my career to where I didn't serve myself well in that department. Mm. Whereas somebody like a Vice or yourself or, or or you know like you said Justin out there politicking and. You know, I like I look up to you guys so, when it comes to that because you guys put in that work and understand that world where for me I, I never I never like I always wanted to sit down and, with Vice and be like, dude, how the fuck did you do this? Mm-hmm. So so I was gonna bring that up. So Vice was one of the the first that kind of got a taste of radio hurting him in right. Hollywood. Yeah. And Echo and I remember, was smart enough to be like, hey, you guys need to... And I remember <laughs> him leaving... And, and this is when I'm just starting at Power. And like I said, Power Power 106 and radio was a huge deal. So I was like, wait, you're leaving? Like, what? Yeah. That, that's stupid. You hung on for I was like, that's stupid. Like, I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. And he had to explain, like, the, the, the world he was going into, which was under AM, yeah. like, these massive Hollywood promoters were like, the guy from Power? Yeah. The guy from the radio? Like no, I mean, am at told so him too, yeah. So it was hurting him too, and I was like, I didn't, I didn't understand it at the time, bro. Fashion, like, yeah, I was yeah. like, nah, this should help you. Like, it's building your name, yeah. it's making you bigger. But in his mind, and yeah, he, dude, yeah. he was early. He he like dipped, and I was oh, like, he started oh, in Vegas too, remember? And then like, you know, in Vegas clubs, don't know what Power on Six is, so right. it's just yeah. Yeah, and and again, I'm not. I can't put the whole blame on radio. And don't get me wrong. You guys know I love. I love radio. I love DJing on the air. And I, you know, I get my fill every day DJing. Yeah. But and I still do clubs. But mm-hmm. it's it's not like it was back in the day yeah, when I was doing yeah. like five clubs a week. Yeah. And I was, 
and I miss that a little bit. And then uh, I start thinking about it I'll, a lot. I'll, I'll say <laughs> this. Yeah, I'll say I, this. Then I don't. You're miss not it. missing anything. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> well, I think you're you, you, like it's the grass. Yeah, is I think you have the right balance, man. man. No, it's, yeah, grass, yeah, yeah. I appreciate That's the that. perfect balance. And 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 so yeah, fast forward, you know, now to this actual day, this moment. When I think about it, I'm like, you know, I do clubs here and there. I get my fill when it makes sense. And you got a steady career. Like, I think you did the right thing, bro. Like, for sure. Imagine leaving a like radio, let's say, let's call it 10, 15 years ago, because you wanted to pursue this Vegas, whatever shit. And then, like, that doesn't last. And, like, I think now, I'm like, fuck, like, I wish I had something more steady than having to be on a plane every <laughs> plane and yeah. DJing till God knows what time in the morning hungover. Like, I love it. That gets old, bro, <laughs> to be honest. I, yeah. and, and grass is always greener. Yeah, yeah, you yeah know, for sure. You always want what you don't have. And then when you get it, you're like, damn, nah, it wasn't what it what is. Well, we've had be. talks where you've been like, bro, I fucking, I can't do it. You know, and I'm just like, bro. And I've told you many times, like, duh, you're, you're. You're yeah. in a good place, like what basically what your pop said. Yeah, no, yeah. I, and I do realize you. that. Yeah, I do realize that, and I and I, but I do also realize that I don't want to just be miserable. I want to be happy. So for me, I took a step back and like stopped doing certain certain markets just because it was like t- beating me down. You know, like so, and I st- and I'm smart, bro. Like I I, I just called myself smart. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you did. Here, let me say it for you. You're Meaning smart. What I'm, smart, I'm dog. smart in the sense of like I know what I want and I know don't yeah, want, yeah. and I and I'm building something else. Yeah. And like slowly transitioning where I'm I'm do like you have a good balance. You have radio and clubs, right? That's what you said. Yeah. I have a good balance of like with my design stuff with HMC with the uh, with DJing here and there. And like now I don't do too much of anything to be like depressed yeah. the way I used to be. I was super depressed, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's why you when when emo, when you mentioned emo Eric. that's why when you mentioned gloomy weather, I was like, oh, I love you. You're like, of course yeah. you do. Like, <laughs> yeah, we're we, and you know, I mean, not to sound corny and but you know that comes from within. You know, yeah, that's, no, of that's, course. You know, and you you figure that out. I think it also is is the the older and wiser that you get, you know, you start figuring certain things out, and you know, yeah. So I definitely think. Uh, you did really good career moves, man, yeah. and and very proud of your your long run. Like I said, that shit ain't easy, bro. Thank that, you. People come and go I in in, in markets like this, and I've yeah. seen it. I've I've been through it, and you know. And I and I and I still love it, and I'm man, I'm blessed, and you know when we when we do this again, we'll we can focus on some of the some of the stories yeah I'll, I'll we need stories, stories. I, sure. yeah, I, yeah i wanted to ask like, i even have look, like worst interview best interview because i've had i we can because oh. we can go back and forth bro i have crazy radio oh, stories man, too dude. worst interview i can tell you was chingy <laughs> <laughs> really chingy, chingy got off a plane and in his defense he was like apparently dead tired and the label, in hindsight, probably was like we should have never had him up and do this interview. Was it what? Uh, what right? Like was this right like there? Hotel, era? Oh, hotel. Wow. Okay. Or, it was like, or like it when you do it right there. Maybe it was right oh, there. So it was like okay. at the height of Chingy. Yeah, he yeah, was this Chingy. Is Chingy. Chingy. Oh, wow. This is Chingy, superstar Chingy, and I disturbing the peace, getting, Chingy. Huh? Right? Was he disturbing the peace? Yeah. 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 He was yeah. DTP. Yeah. And I think it was from St. Louis, um, but he was giving me one word answers. Uh, you know, I'm yeah. here. I am doing like a two hour question, yeah. yeah. And he's like, No, and yeah. I'd be like, Well, what about blah 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 blah? I don't know. And I'm like, And I got fucking pissed, yeah. You sucks. know, ba- not in the sense of I was just like, Yo, I'm I think I'm done. I think we're I think we're done here, yeah. This is done. So that was just terrible interview. Uh, if I had to say best interview. And I know there's there's so I I couldn't even I don't there's so many I don't know. Here's one. Rest in peace, Jam Master J. Oh wow. I of all the artists that I got to interview over the years, when I had the opportunity to interview all three members of Run DMC. Wow. That was Damn. like huge for me because you know it's really dope. Obviously, you know that was the epitome of my hip hop come up with yeah. those guys and. Um, and then and I and I became friends with with Jam Master J and oh, wow. and then like not even like two years later you know he he passed and it was dude that that was that that was just it just the fact that I got to interview them but but yeah I got a lot of stories about interviews uh, a lot of stories about 
studio stuff and yeah, man. how some of these records came about. Heavy we, hitter stuff. The heavy hitter stuff. Damn, Fashion so was shit. a heavy hitter. He, I remember when he didn't want, he decided not to be because he, he thought that yeah. that affected his DJ yeah. stuff. He got off radio. He got off radio thing. and he, he, he got out of the crew and I remember telling him like, you motherfucker, like you <laughs> bugged me about this shit. And now you, but I, but I understand why he did it, Yeah, you know? And, and, uh, but, but I remember my guys like, what the fuck, bro? You put this dude on, and within a matter of a year or two, he's gone, or however long it was. But yeah, like stuff like that. I, I don't know that I've ever fully understood that how the radio and a and a and a and a DJ crew affiliation. I I never. I don't think to he was this from day a smaller market out. too. It was like Arizona yeah. at the time, in Phoenix, yeah. and I remember we were out there a DJ, and he was like, you know, the homie that came and hung out, and he was like, dude, they won't book me here because like I'm on the radio, and. It's, he, and it's and it's what him. kind of radio station yeah, and it, and it's what kind of DJ yeah. crew. It's like oh a hip hop DJ crew, you know. And over the years, you know, I've been in the heavy hitter DJ crew for shit twenty something years. Yeah. I was one of the I think original ten um, members, and you know now we got like I don't know a hundred and something. Mm -hmm. And I don't know when I find something that I like or that I or if I make a decision to be a part of something, I tend stick to, to it, stick yeah. with it. And you know whether it's the radio or can the you, car club or can you explain uh, it real quick what what heavy hitters is to people that don't know? Yeah, so heavy hitters DJ crew is is obviously a exactly that DJ crew hip hop um, DJs primarily and radio only or or no? no. That, so the, at first it was right. No, no, kind of, kind of. I guess because it was you know DJ enough, uh, Camillo, you know those are, you know the the the, our 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 Godfathers, founding fathers, yeah, yeah our founding <laughs> fathers. Uh, shout to DJ Threat, rest in peace. Um, but but that it started off with like ten of us, mm. and and, and they're you know obviously a East Coast based New York crew is how it started. And now we have DJs all over the world, but you know, I, I, it's a, it's a hip hop DJ crew and it started more of a, as a camaraderie, it, you know, just talking, you know, amongst yeah. as DJs and, you know, um, you know, and, and, and hip hop being so big, especially back in, you know, late nineties, early two thousands, it was just, you know, and it, and, and it became the creme de la creme sought after, Hip hop DJ crew, and um, yeah, I mean it. And now we have members from Germany to Damn. to Thailand, Japan, to, Japan. yeah, lead you know, right, lead lead DJ lead. DJ lead. Damn. And it, you know, it's cool because when you, if you need music or you need, you know, we, I think we pretty much have somebody in every city. Damn. Wow. But it is hardcore hip hop, and I think what how that has affected. The club stuff is when they know certain you're in this, certain cities. Certain I think cities like in New like, York didn't affect them at all. No, like all those guys no. played all. You know, but but I think in cities like L.A. and and in Vegas, it's kind of like you know how it is. Some of these no, promoters of and clubs they shy away from. It's too hip hop. Yeah, you know? Felly's too hip hop. Felly's mm. and I remember it bothered me. And I and I is got there to an the example point where, where a club said that to you, like or a manager came back to me and was like, they they they, they, they think you're too. Too hip, too hip hop, and I'm like, what does that really mean? Let's let's really get to, the, you know. And it <laughs> yeah. would piss me off, yeah. and I and I remember, like, at one point, a manager was like, we need to, you know, you need to wear a tie in this photo, and you need to, like, we need to image you different. And I remember, <clears throat> I remember that era of like, yeah, a DJ yeah. for headshots, yeah, and fucking ties. No, We're all guilty 100%. of it. And I and I remember like that didn't last long for me because I was like, yo, I can't be somebody that I'm not. Period. Yeah. I don't give a fuck if nobody ever wants to book me at their fucking club ever again. I'm gonna you be. You had cornrows at one point too. I, I, I had braids, <laughs> and and I loved my braids. Yeah. You know, and I, you know, but I. I, I to this day it's like I'm gonna wear what I want to wear. I'm gonna be yeah. who I am, and I'm you know especially as I got older, I'm like, in, with some things in life, you go, what the fuck am I doing? You right. Know, I'm not. I'm not gonna let you dictate who I am as a person, and that happens with people. Yeah. And then they they end up getting their dream, but at what cost? Yeah. You know because yeah. now you're not really being who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sell so, out or sell your soul. <laughs> so I you know. 
and so now it's it, I'm real it's I'm in a happy place in my life I I I do what I want to do when it comes to clubs when the opportunity seems right and if it happens it happens if it you know if it doesn't it doesn't and I just kind of roll with the punches and there, here we are. Here we are. Damn, yeah. man. I f- blessed to be definitely, here, man. Yeah, blessed to be here for sure. Definitely need a round, a part two of this because like, there's Soon, so much yeah. shit. And I, and I, man, I, man, I, I mean, we talk all the time. Yeah, you know, we talk a lot, but I, this is fun to me. Yeah, like, me too. And it, and it, and it's, it's fun because it reminds me of shit that I haven't thought about. Because uh, I think it's healthy. This yeah, is, no, this sure. is our first time. Like I said, twenty years, bro. This is our first time really talking like this without yeah. like alcohol involved yeah <laughs> like we hey real. we're like friends we're on like oh at a bar at a club yeah, wherever yeah. wherever and we're usually having a drink which is fun too yeah but this is the first time like really getting to know yeah. the the story is amazing and that's and well, thank that's, you guys and i still have so many things i want to know because like this It'll is my same. era too bro like yeah i came for, i learned so much from you like thank where siphon i sh- show was like produced and and had little segments because of the way you ran your show, man. So you, it's very, and flattered. I'm sure, and I'm sure DJs from all over the country, like <laughs> base their show off of your, uh, of the way sure. you did it too. So I got some of those stories too. Nice. I got some of those stories. We get drinks next time. Then. How, how, how <laughs> we got a lot of jokes, uh, <laughs> how, how that actually, you know, being in radio would help, as a producer and, and in some cases hurt i can tell some of those stories Damn. wow about how you know some of these guys are you know they wish they could be doing what you're doing and you guys can relate i mean you get djs that you know they they wish they could be in your shoes same thing when you know you get some of these radio guys that always would attempt to produce or right. and then now they don't want to play your record because you know Oh yeah, that's an, that's more quick. Like, oh yeah, like, I mean, there's a lot, I, and, and I and again, let's do it again. Like when you have your records, like other markets were probably yeah. not didn't want to play it because you're like being on the radio affected that. Or to your point, like thinking that oh he's 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 a he's not a nice or he's got an ego or this or that. And it's like, I mean, fuck, there's so much shit. It, to yeah, talk about. it's like God damn it. And that's the other thing, bro. Like I would find myself like. It was very an interesting dynamic. I started realizing, like, fuck, now I know how these fucking artists feel when they come up to the station. Wow. And then, it, and then it, it, there was a time that I didn't even want to do interviews anymore because I'm like, I do not want to be that guy because mm-hmm. wow. I know you half the time you don't even want to fucking be here. Yeah. And you're coming up to do this interview because the label is telling you, like, if you don't do this, they're not going to play your song. And I'm thinking to myself, that ain't true. I won't play your song just because it fucking sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, and, and, or, or I'm going to play your song because the shit's dope as fuck. Whether yeah. you came and did an interview or a fucking show, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. You know, and I'd tell a station, like, I don't give a shit if they didn't do a show. Like, yeah. Which we really never did that. We never hated on a record because of an artist not doing something for us. Yeah. And I think there is a misunderstanding. In, or people think there it is that. Well, then you get these 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 people, you know, people in 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 hip hop or in, or in the music industry saying, "Oh, it's it's politics." Mm-hmm. When really most of the time it's not. You know, it's really just have a fucking dope ass song. And the crazy thing is uh the crazy thing is younger people like us when we first started, we were so like by the book. Yeah. So like what's on the playlist, on yeah. the mix show list is what I played, right? And like my programming was great. Like E-Man loved me because like I was all about my A's and yeah. I knew how to like knew how to program really yeah. well. Yeah, you did. And and, and uh, fast forward when you start meeting younger artists and they don't understand how it works. And I, I forgot who someone told me something that like really stood out. And they were like, yo, like picture our playlist is like a menu. Like I'm not gonna walk into McDonald's and ask for a Whopper. Yeah. Like they you you they can only make a Big Mac, a fillet of fish or whatever. Whatever's on the menu is what they can make. You can't go in there and be like, yo, give me a fucking superstar. That's a Carl's, you yeah. know. So <laughs> right. it, I like I had to. I was treating my playlist like a menu and shit, and like this is all I could play. Yeah. And artists never understood that, yeah. you know. Some artists. Yeah. I mean, most artists. <laughs> did it understand most artists 
And, you know, like I said, you get, you, you become, when you're in those shoes of the artist, you kind of understand. Like, you know, I could see how an artist would be like, man, fuck these fuck these guys for not playing my record or yeah. fuck this DJ or fuck that DJ. I can, I can understand that because, you know, you're so involved. It's so close to your heart, you know, and you like, you poured your, you poured your heart and soul into something that's not getting the great going yeah. the way you, you yeah. hoped. You and know, honestly, so man, like real quick, just on some real shit, like it was a, a little embarrassing at one point, to be a DJ up there because of the the way music was going and the playlist were like some of the records, bro. I was like embarrassed to play, man. Like, I know, you know, we yeah. don't have to get into details, but like yeah. some of the records, I was like, "Fuck, this is an A," and I have to play it every hour. And yeah. and people think yeah. people that don't know there's a playlist think, think that, I oh, want you really like that song. Oh, yeah, dang, so you much. really love yeah. this song, and I'm like, Ooh, yeah, no, and that, that's part, you know, that's part of the game and that that's that's another thing we were talking about pros and cons yeah yeah, that's a con that's for sure yeah and that's you know uh, luckily you know when when part 50 percent of my show is me on the turntables and for the most part i i i i i won't play something that i really can't stand like i just won't play it you know even if it's on the list I even oh. really, I, I know, but I, I wanted to even talk about real quick. I know you got to go be on the radio, but but oh, man, I remember I, blow me up. I remember when you started at Power and you weren't DJing. Mm. So I, me not knowing yeah, your Vice, background. Vice and Echo were yeah, doing my mix. My, that's when I, my came. Mix for that's like when I first... came and got kicked out of a little Kim interview. But anyway. Like, like the first six months. I would come and they'd do a 30-minute mix at 10. And mm-hmm. then. The heat. The 10 o'clock heat. And it was Vice echo and then sometimes other i think e-man sometimes did it chalk once would come or e-man I, so i remember this time stands out so i didn't know he i didn't know his background so i'm thinking he's just a uh, jock like just does talk breaks whatever has this is his show and then it was one of those things like oh he dj's too of course he dj's too right <laughs> <laughs> and i remember the day i don't even know if you remember but it was e-man came to do the mix and it was he never did the mix. It would they would ro- rotate like let's say Verman, Koki, sometimes wow, if it, yeah. if Echo and Vice couldn't do it, and E Man comes up to do it right, and he gets on the mic and he's just like, "Yo, I want to switch places with you," and he goes, "I'm gonna go over there. You come do it, DJ," and he put you on the spot. Oh shit! And that yeah. was your first time, wow. and you came in and you DJed off his vinyl. Cause this oh, is Vi- yeah. Free oh, Serato. Yeah. Wow. I had to use his records. And I remember yeah. he DJ'd the, his set for the first time. And I remember here, I was like, yo, he actually DJs. Yeah. And <laughs> and there was one, I don't know if you remember. That's crazy how I, I have the worst fucking memory in the world, but I'll remember certain shit. <laughs> Selective memory. I remember you missed, you like started mixing and you missed the hook and you were mixing the entire verse and it was on beat crisp. I was like, oh, he could DJ. Like uh, he he was writing crazy. the whole verse because you like forgot to mix out. Yeah. Like because you didn't know his records. You know how oh, it goes. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. like you you were you kept it till the next hook, and the, the shit blended the whole way, and it was on beat. And I was like, yeah, he really DJs. It's funny. That's crazy. Do you remember that at all? Now that I say it, no, nope, <laughs> not really. <laughs> I mean, I've, obviously, I remember Vice. That was the first doing time the heat you with Echo. you DJed on Power. Yeah. First time. That's cr- that dog. E man was bl- a guest, and he put you on the spot it's on the air, crazy. and you guys switched places. <laughs> Anytime I forget something about twenty years, I'm just gonna call you and be like, "Hey, Eric, <laughs> just out of curiosity." There's a chance, yeah. yeah there's a chance yeah. I might remember. <laughs> All right, I love you guys. Yo, Felly, thank you, bro. I'll love see you. Man. We'll do it again right, soon. Yeah. Thank Part you two, so maybe. much for having me. Nah, thank thanks you for scratch. coming, man. Yeah, thank you guys scratch for tuning. Scratch a get a shout out today. <laughs> yeah, shout us out. Um, I guess yeah. part two. Yeah, we got part two for sure. It's on record now. Let's go. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. Peace.